Okay, here are three reasons why tennis is the metaphor that you're looking for right now. So I'm in Canberra at the moment and uh, visiting my mom and my brothers and nieces and nephews. And this is the tennis court where I learned how to play tennis. Now I'm still not a great tennis player, but I've got three reasons why I think tennis might have something to teach us or maybe tennis courts might have something to teach us. So the first thing to say is that this court got built 50 years ago by my dad. I mean, not just by my dad, but he was part of something called the Torrens Development Association, which was the committee of newly arrived people who were trying to build this suburb, Torrens, in Canberra, into something. Because at the time, Torrens was the newest suburb. It was the outskirts of Canberra. It was just wilderness and barbarians or whoever else beyond that. We were trying to craft something that was a community here. And my dad, who's a, ma a great man, I loved him, um, he was brilliant in that he did not care who, that he got the credit for the work he did. For him, legacy was not what you're known for, but what you, the work that you did, what you built with your hands. So he built the hall just over there, the association hall. I did scouts there and Cub Scouts. I even did a ballet lesson there once. Uh, he helped build this. He helped create festivals. He sat on boards. He sat on committees. There was a thousand ways my dad went, here's the quiet, important way that I'm building community around here. So that's the first lesson for me, which is don't worry about getting credit. There's a time and a place to be known for sure. But if you're looking for legacy, it's the work that you do. So do that work. The second lesson that I take from this is uh, kind of connected to legacy, which is lineage. Um, you know, lineage is often spoken in a kind of spiritual sense. This is my spiritual pathway. The teachers that have taught teachers that have taught teachers that have taught me. But I think of, when I think of tennis, I think of Tim Galway and the inner game of tennis and a uh, follow-on book called The Inner Game of Work. And Tim Galway isn't talked about much these days, but really he's one of the, the true progenitors of this idea of coaching that we have now. Tim Galloway was extremely influential on Sir John Whitmore. John Whitmore wrote the book Coaching for Performance, which is probably the second best-selling book on coaching after my book. Um, and Sir John I got to know a little bit and he talked about uh, Tim Galloway a lot. And you should look him up on, on YouTube, Tim Galloway teaching somebody to play tennis completely in less than 30 minutes. It was a 60 minutes uh, show. And what Tim Galway did, the way he taught tennis, was not, oh, here's the racket, here's how to hold the racket, here's a forehand, here's a backhand. He didn't go into any of that. Here's how he started. He had the person stand there and they would, he would throw a tennis ball and the person had to say bounce when the ball bounced. And when the ball went past them at the place that he, they thought they should hit it, they needed to say hit, bounce, hit, bounce, hit. No tennis racket involved, just actually brilliantly learning to focus on the two things that really mattered. Bounce, hit. And that idea of understanding what needs to be taught to lay the foundations is really powerful. There's um, a book by Josh Watkins, I think. That's not quite right. Tim, Gal um, Tim Ferriss interviews him a lot, who was a, uh, a, a, champion, a, a chess grandmaster. And he talks about learning to play chess just by moving a single pawn around the board. That was how he learned the basics. Um, so, sort of a similar powerful story. And then the third lesson, I mean, I can think of more than one, but I'm going to pick Ash Barty. Very proud of Ash Barty because she's Australian and I'm Australian, so I feel like I get some kind of residual credit. <laughs> and, you know, when I'm filming this, she had recently just uh, announced her retirement from tennis, having recently won the Australian Open, having recently won Wimbledon. I mean, she is at the top of her game and she's walking away. And of course, there's lots of people going, what are you doing? Ash, you've got years left to make money, to make a difference, to win titles. But you know, Ash Barton uh, has always just been brilliant at knowing what she wants and having the courage to follow that. You know, she quit tennis once before and went and played cricket for a while and then came back to tennis and was super successful. And I think the third lesson that I take from the, the tennis court is just this reminder of the power of knowing what you want. Because when you get clear on what you want, you have the fuel, you have the courage, you have the clarity to make the, the bold choices and the, the bold commitments that can really make a difference. So three lessons from tennis courts. One, 
about legacy and it's about the work you do. It's not necessarily about the name that you have. Second uh, is about a lineage and knowing who your teachers are. You know, I often say my work is old wine and new bottles. And I look to Tim Galway and I look to Sir John Whitmore to say these are teachers who've influenced me. Who are your teachers and who were their teachers? It's really helpful to get back to the basics. And then the third Ash Barty, just so wonderful to say, you know what, I'm done. Even though there's more I could do here, I'm personally done and being willing to walk away for that, ready for the next adventure. Brilliant. Sign up for my newsletter at mbs.works. It's a short weekly newsletter and at its heart is the distillation, a short article about a key tool that will help you be a force for change. You can sign up at mbs.works.